Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great and following the three H's of the channel. And in this video, there is quite a variety of the chilling, strange, and bizarre type things. Portals in Yosemite Park. A Firewatch Ranger sees some really weird things in the deep woods. Giant spiders in the Grand Canyon. And two close encounters with crawlers. Or are they something else? If that sounds like something you're interested in, pull up a stump with me and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. So back in 2018, I went hiking near Half Dome in Yosemite. I didn't get a permit to climb up and I was just exploring the trail up to it and a little off trail. Maybe... 500 yards or so, nothing crazy. And as I was walking, I saw what looked like a sheet of heat waves coming off the rocks. I walked over to it to see what it was and to check it out more. I quickly noticed that the half of the rock that these heat waves are coming off of seems to be literally cut in half, like a perfect slice. I go to touch the top of the rock to feel the sharp edge and to see if it's hot, but my fingers vanish inside the rock. I quickly pull my hand back and check my fingers. They're still there. I'm thinking, what the actual hell is going on right now? I reach my hand out again above the rock. My hand just vanishes into thin air up to my sleeve cuff. I pull my hand back and immediately go back to the trail. I'm running back to the actual HD trail and I can see people on it. I really feel like something is right behind me as I'm running. Just this odd sense of absolute fear. I get back on trail and I'm close to a group of other hikers and I head back down to the small parking lot and I leave. After searching around for this, some people claim that I put my hand into a portal or something. And then I got reading about boulder fields and stuff, and the whole thing just really is scary to me. This isn't necessarily the scariest thing that has ever happened, and it didn't happen to me happened to my uncle but he had a really bizarre encounter with something so my uncle goes to visit a friend one day he stays there long after sundown and has to walk back home in the dark this is no biggie the area is quite safe and he's not really into paranormal stuff so none of that spooky stuff bothers him or he doesn't even really believe in it. The old dirt road that he's taking is lined by trees, and he hears movement in one of them. He looks over and sees shadows in the trees, small shapes in the branches, following him tree to tree. He realizes suddenly that they're monkeys, but monkeys don't exist in this area. He begins to hurry along, glancing occasionally at the trees. He said that every time that he looks, they looked more detailed, more lifelike. At first, they were semi-transparent shadows. Then, they're flat black shapes, like cardboard cutouts almost. Then, they start to become three-dimensional, like they're coming into our reality. At some point, they have eyes which seem to glint and glow in the dark. My uncle begins to run. These monkeys start making weird noises and deep growls. Something about it sounds vaguely human. He always asked me if I ever seen the movie Ghost, and he said the things sounded just like the ghosts in that movie. My uncle runs until he gets home and fumbles for his keys. 
he glances over at the trees. The monkey figures are lingering in the shadows of the trees, making an ungodly amount of noise, shrieking, shaking the branches violently. He gets in the door and rushes inside, slams the door shut and locks it. He looks out the window. The figures are totally gone, no trace of them, and he never saw them again. My encounter with these crawlers, or cave crawlers, whatever you want to call them, was probably the most terrifying, horrifying, and panic-inducing experiences of my entire life. I have never felt such a deep, animalistic fear as that night. It can't fully be described in words, but seeing them is like having your body and brain lit on fire with fear. I remember being parked next to a dark creek with a light post above the car. I was parked there for a short time. I felt vulnerable and I felt intensely that I was being watched by something. I was looking at the tree line which was very dark and then I could see this white form standing out from the darkness. It couldn't have been more than 10 feet from the car. I could make out the texture of its skin. It looked like old, dried, ash-covered leather. The moment I saw this form, I couldn't make out any body parts. I think I was looking at its back. It was crouched in hindsight. I was hit with an instant adrenaline rush. Zero to a hundred, instantly. In that moment, the moment I laid eyes on it, my brain somehow immediately knew that I was looking at something that I had never seen before, but was incredibly dangerous. Whatever these are, in the unknown depths of the past, we had to have had extensive contact with them. The fear and recognition of them is 100% ingrained on an instinctual level. Yet at the same time, they seem to be closely related to us, and they themselves are familiar with human beings. My theory is that they are among the remnants of the Nephilim, who, for whatever reason, were confined to cavernous systems and having adapted to them, not only to come up to the surface at night to hunt, but also to observe us. That would explain, in my opinion, their almost demonic nature, their intelligence, and their physical similarity to us. Sightings have been increasing, and they seem to be living closer and closer in proximity to us. It's a sign of the times, if you ask me. So I was in Arizona, visiting an old work buddy. My buddy is former army, he did combat tours in Afghanistan. We were drinking heavily, watching the backyard fire, and just asking questions to each other about what we've been up to, telling stories. Somehow, we get on the subject of stuff that we don't want to talk about, and he launches into the story. He gets all excited and kind of gets out to me this. He got back from the sandbox his infantry unit gets reassigned to work in Arizona at some place on the northern part of the Grand Canyon. The army is supposedly doing an excavation in tunnels at the bottom of the canyon, bringing up some kind of artifacts. He didn't really know anything about it. The tunnels, however, are heavily inhabited or infested by spiders of various sizes. They range from regular sized spiders to ones that are apparently the size of cars. They are territorial and very aggressive when they get to this size. So my friend said that he spent most of his time pulling topside guard duty and the best story he had was when he was settling in it was about to be a long shift, so he's just watching birds and stuff. Suddenly, the campsite goes on alert, 
and QRF dives into the tunnels. And after a while, they start coming back out, acting pleased with themselves. There was one guy that they brought out on a stretcher, and his leg was all kinds of screwed up. He described it as basically kind of looking like it was melting, but from a single bite point. Another guy comes up behind the bit soldier and is getting hugs and celebration. The scuttlebutt was that the search squad, along with the people looking for stuff down there, were ambushed by a bunch of spiders. Usually they were easily shot down or scared off by flares or fire, but this younger guy, maybe 19, got bitten on his upper thigh and injected with venom that started turning the blood in his leg to some kind of jelly. Now the guy who saved everybody jumped in to save his friend. He ended up dropping the rifle, trying to drag him back, and had to finally engage using a pistol and a knife. He saved his buddy by ripping off another dead spider's foreleg and using it to stab the thing's eyes out. According to my army bro, the spiders would die if they got one or two limbs shot off because their bodies needed constant hydraulic pressure in order to function. And if you're wondering the stuff they found down there, he doesn't really know. Again, he was just topside security. He said that anything they found were loaded into plastic storage boxes and said a couple of the more massive spiders got loaded up as well, a few dead and one still alive. He said that he heard that the army had moved other stuff out of the site, but it was still ongoing when his platoon was rotated out. Years ago as well, if you ever listened to Coast to Coast AM, they supposedly airlifted two obsidian crypts or coffins out of the Grand Canyon that were so large that they had to be tether-lifted by a Chinook helicopter. The boxes were covered in symbols or some kind of writing. I don't remember who made the claim, but the episode was on giants. Related to that, there's the Giant of Kandahar story, which my army friend says that he believed was gospel. But to be honest, regardless of everything, the idea of giant spiders living in Arizona doesn't seem too far-fetched to me. We tested the A-bomb in White Sands. There has to be some kind of correlation between that much radiation and the fact that the southwest United States is full of these type of things. I spent a lot of time in the woods. I was an avid boy scout, and then I took a deep dive when I was in college into now what would be considered survivalist stuff. During that time, I didn't really see anything too weird that wasn't super unexplainable. I did experience some stuff, like leaves seemingly caught in a time loop, kind of just all frozen almost, in the air, strange noises and voices, suddenly everything going silent, and there was a particular place that I stopped going to, because every time I went off trail backwards, within 30 minutes, I could tell that something was following me. Later on, I became a ranger in Alaska, nothing too weird again in the supernatural department, but I saw lots of weird things. Lots of people doing weird things. Being that far out in the wilderness changes you though. After a while I got tired of Alaska and I got posted somewhere in Washington. I would get put in these towers for weeks at a time to check for fires and other stuff. It was dusk and I heard ruffling down below. I went down the stairs a bit to make sure that the bear gate that I had was locked. I saw something 50 yards out. The thing some people forget is that animals get sick too. Cancer and various diseases. They don't instantly kill but wreak havoc on their bodies, but they still do their animal things. 
I thought it was a sick bear with mange, but as it got closer, something was clearly off. Its front legs were too long, its hind legs were too short. The way it moved was just off-putting. It turned to look at me, and its face was long and hairless with a whole bunch of teeth. It let out this weird low chirp. It turned and took a few steps toward me. It closed 20 yards in like two seconds and did this weird rattling noise. It turned around and squirted this horrendous yellow liquid that smelled awful. It got up on two legs, screamed, then took off running. That was the weirdest thing. One time, I encountered a guy walking on a trail once. It was odd that he was that far out, but not super odd. But he didn't have any backpack or any hiking equipment. I went to say hi, but he didn't seem to know I was there. He didn't seem to be walking faster than me, but the distance between us kept widening. And this is when it got really weird. I rounded a bend, and I thought I caught up to him. And then, there was no person. There was only a wolf walking in the same direction that the guy was walking. But now there was no guy. This happened in the summer of 2013. I decided that it's time to kill some coyotes for that sweet fur. I grabbed my bare bones basic AR-15. I liked the way that the AK slings affix, so I had my own ratchet sling point to put on the barrel. I sling it on my right side, around my neck, messenger bag style. I take my ATV up to a cabin on the mountain. I take the key to my ATV and I start looking around. I had been throwing squirrel and rabbit guts into the woods to bring the predators around. I check my bait. It's all gone. I keep getting this strange feeling while I'm out there. There's a guy who lives on the mountain just down the road. He leaves his car just as I decide I should look around deeper in the woods. Every time I step, I keep thinking I hear another footstep shuffling through the grass and underbrush. And then I see this weird thing in the distance. It looks almost like a stick figure shape, but it's kind of downhill from me, a little hard to see. I wave my hand at it. It slips behind a tree, and I think, oh god. I go back to the cabin. And I sit there for a while, and I end up having a couple drinks. Not enough to get drunk, but just try to, you know, loosen up after what I saw down there. After a few hours, it's getting darker out, and I start hearing coyote yelps in the distance. By this point, I had totally forgotten anything close to what happened a few hours earlier. I was really focused on the coyotes. So I'm now outside on the porch with all the lights off. I'm as still as I can, just waiting. But nothing comes by. The yelping seems to get more distant. And then I hear a very soft, help me. I look over to the neighbor's house and I see that all the lights are off. It doesn't click that he left. I stand up and listen. I hear it again. Help me. I start to think, what if he went out into the woods and he fell and he broke his leg and he needs help and there's coyotes around because I put all the bait around. I start to get anxiety about it. I figure that I have to go and find out. I start walking. I get close enough to the woods to tell that it's on an ATV trail. So I take my ATV and my AR. I'm driving toward the person, saying help me, when I come to a U-shaped dip in the path. I don't hit my brakes, I just coast down with it. And in the dark, I hear something scream, help me. 
and I freak out and I try to turn, but I do it too fast and I end up flipping the ATV. I black out for a minute. I wake up underneath the ATV with it pinned on top of me. I sit still and I wait for my eyes to adjust. I start feeling around. I feel that my left leg is pinned under the ATV. I try pushing it, but I can't get it off. It's like it got a hundred pounds heavier in a couple seconds. The sling around my neck tells me that I still have my rifle. I drag it to me, and I realize that my arm is bleeding quite bad in the meantime. I check over the gun the best I can. The handguard is all screwed up and the stock is cracked, but it appears to be still functional. I think to myself I've got 30 rounds to keep me safe until the night's over, or until somebody finds me. I sit and listen closely to the sounds of the forest before I hear something shuffling in the grass that silences everything. It's now dead quiet. I don't think I've ever felt more fear than I have in this moment. I hear it shuffling around. Help me. Help me. I don't know if I should respond or sit in silence. The shuffling gets closer to me. Something appears over the ATV, just like if you had fallen at a bar and the bartender looked at you funny. It looked like it was nine feet tall. I was frozen solid. I twiddle my fingers and reach for my gad. I just bring it to my shoulder and I sit there with it pointed at whatever the hell this is. I don't want to look at it because screw that. I hear, help me, whatever it is is climbing over my ATV. I'm looking away still, but something grabs my face. I think, oh shit. My mind goes blank. I'm looking for my trigger finger, but it's like my body won't listen to me. It slowly moves my head over. I'm face to face with this thing, and it's looking me in the eyes. It looked like pretty much exactly how someone else described them. Like Golem from Lord of the Rings had done crack and carved up its face, and it had sunken cheeks, very deep eyes. To this day, I've never smelled anything quite as worse as the breath from that thing. I feel the flash hider on my AR-15 bump into something. I remember that I had it aimed at the thing. My brain finally reboots. I scream as loud as I can. It screams back. I start yanking, not pulling or squeezing the trigger as fast as I can. The gun is going off. My ears are starting to ring. It grabs my hair and starts slamming my head into the ground as fast as it can. I'm still pulling the trigger as fast as I can as well. It rips the thing from my hand and starts to beat me with the broken stock. It's still screaming as loud as it can while beating me over the head with my own gun. Lights start to flicker through the woods. I'm just about to black out when I hear something louder than the screaming. I swear I saw the thing's head fly open. It drops my gun and screams like a child that's been shoved into an oven and starts to run for it. It drops the gun ten feet from my head. This light is getting closer. I don't know if I'm being saved or if I'm dying. I hear, hold on, hold on, and my name. Something is tugging on my arm. I look over, and it's the guy who lived down the road. He's got an F-off huge revolver. I see him fire a shot off. The thing drops and starts twitching on the ground. I black out. I wake up in the hospital. I have a ton of stitches in my head. When I get out, I ask my neighbor what he saw that night. He replies with, Oh, it was just a bear, don't worry about it. We get them often up here. I told him that I wasn't really convinced that I was nearly beaten to death with my own gun 
by an effing bear. So, what'd you think of those encounters? Let me know which one was your favorite one down in the comments. Do you have an encounter of your own? I have an email in the description below that you can send them to if you'd like to. And they will be in a video at some point. And in the description as well, I have a PayPal and a Patreon. If you would like to support the channel that way. No pressure though. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then maybe like and subscribe. And I'll put some other videos up on the screen here so that you can watch another one if you'd like to. Thank you for pulling up a stump. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.